That's fine. Well, well guys, it is 530. So I am going to go ahead and call to order the Montgomery County Consolidated Board of Health and Human Services meeting on January 18th. I'm um, Frankie, I'm assuming we can move forward without Kay here yet, since there are no. Yes, we're, we're OK with that. Yep, you're good. All right. So the first thing we need to do is approve the agenda. So I do need someone to, to make a motion to approve our agenda. I move I'll to approve the agenda. Approved. All right. I'll have to do with one of the uh, of the board, Dr. Woodyear. So John Shaw made the motion. And so I need a second. Mary. I'm sorry, I second that. Yes, so, all right. So the approval of the agenda. Um, next is public forum based on who I see on here. I don't know that we have anybody for public forum. But if um, anyone... Robert, Robert and I are here, Robert and Lynn Lair. Frankie, could you hear what they said, who that is? <clears throat> that was Mr. and Mrs. Lair. So if yeah. you can give the rules and procedures then for the public forum. Sure. The public comment period shall be for the purpose of allowing members of the public to comment on county business or items on the agenda. This period shall not serve as a forum for debate with the board. Remarks shall be addressed directly to the board and not to staff, the audience, or media. The chairman shall open the public comment period. Any person who wishes to speak shall use the raise hand feature in Zoom. Any citizen desiring to comment on a matter of public interest within the authority of the board to legislate in an open forum shall be allotted three minutes. Citizens may yield their time on a specific topic by utilizing no more than two citizens' time slots. This will allow up to, but no more than nine minutes. The county manager shall notify the chairman upon the expiration of the allotted time. All right, so I know this is a little different tonight with us doing this the first time via Zoom. So whomever would like to speak first, if you would just give your name and address for the record, please. Lynn Lair, 1779 Yank Road in Mount Gilead. All right, Lynn. Okay, you can hear me, is that right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, I just wanted to address the public health um nuisance aspect of the of the chicken operation that was definitely going in on yank road and now possibly or probably we do, we have no idea but we're trying to find out and i wanted to just get people to think about the simple question of what what we want montgomery county to look like and i think we can have poultry farm operations but they don't need to be near homes or, or anywhere near schools or churches. Uh, this morning I was thinking about church and I was wondering about the small county churches, country churches and how there's a lot of land around them, a lot of them, and what it would be like to come out of church and have that smell, that ammonia and the uric acid hit my throat and hit my eyes. So I think that any kind of county guideline that is possible could address a distance from churches as well as schools and homes that are already there. Obviously, if someone chooses to build a home near a poultry farm, then that's, that's their choice to do so. Um, people who live near poultry operations, of course, are going to have 24-7 of what someone would come walking out of church on Sunday morning or Wednesday evening. And we have spoken to people around the state. They can't go in their backyard. They feel like they're imprisoned in their house. They watch stuff pass by through their security lighting. Um, there are schools that have vacant land near them. And um, we wouldn't want poultry farms there either. And I think in all of these situations, they pose a public health hazard. Um, about a year ago, the North Carolina legislature took away something that had been used to prevent poultry operations being near homes and schools, and that is the nuisance uh, statute. But they didn't change the public health nuisance statute, which is still something that a health department in a county 
the county still does have this power. And um, I think the county government could use this power to guide where poultry operations go. We don't want to stop commercial investment in Montgomery County, but we also don't want people to think they can come in and pick up any land anywhere in the country and put in poultry operations, no matter what it's nearby. Um, the most conservative estimate I have is that it's probably safe to be two miles from the perimeter of a poultry operation. And what the county could do would be simply to say that anything closer than two miles to a church or school or home could be a potential public health nuisance. And that an economic, not economic, an environmental assessment or study could be made to determine it. So we're not saying someone can't put something there. We're just saying that it's a potential public health nuisance to be near any of those types of buildings. If this were true, I have a feeling, since there is so much land in Montgomery County, that investors would, pr would prefer to install these operations in land that is not within that two mile distance uh, from homes or schools or churches. It would be something that is, does not conflict with state law. It would simply be a county using the power it had to determine what our county is gonna look like in 10 years. There's a gentleman in Stanley County, he is buying land all over Montgomery County and it's for the purpose of poultry farming. This is something that's gonna become bigger and bigger and occur more and more. And I think it's really important for the Board of Health and also the county commissioners to consider that they could right now look at some guidelines for future poultry operations. And I'm talking about large scale size. I'm not talking about small poultry farms. Ms. I'm Lair. talking about any. Yes, sir. You've reached your allotted three minutes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Layer. And obviously, you know, we, we were able to hear you at our um, last county commissioner meeting as well. And there's much for us to uh, dig into and consider and uh, look at from a preemptive status. Um, and of course, considering all of the, the poultry farms that we have across the county uh, currently. So um, thank you again for uh, coming and speaking with us. Is your husband gonna speak tonight as well? Yes, ma'am. All right, so your name and address, please, sir. Robert Lair, 1779 Yank Road, Mount Gilead. Thank you, Robert. I'll just I'll add a few things to what my wife said. Um, I've actually been in contact, I'm, I'm a retired attorney. I've been in contact with some environmental attorneys in the, in the state, and I proposed something to one of them uh, under the statute that um, allows their, the public health director to abate public nuisances, public health nuisances. Uh, under that statute, I, I posed to him, could, could the county require an uh, environmental assessment prior to or during construction, as long as it didn't absolutely bar the, the, the building of the, of the facility. As my wife suggested, is, is we're, we're, the county seems it would be in the county's best interest and really everyone's best interest to have these poultry operations in areas there where, where the, it's not doesn't affect people, doesn't affect churches, doesn't affect schools, it's not like we're out of room in uh, in Montgomery County, and uh, we we were in contact with the uh, folks in Surrey County who had the same problem, and they were, I mean, it was just horrible. They they ended up having to move. They had to move from a house that they lived in for over 30 years because the poultry because they didn't find out anything about what was going on until it was too late, and then they they fought it for as long as they could, but then they ended up finally having to leave and and what what i think they they mentioned to me I, and one thing that's very concerning to me is that apparently poultry operations they're not required to and no one has a list 
of the of, I, I don't think so of of the of the uh, poultry operations in any in any area. But they were able to find out that there were in Surrey County, which is I suppose comparable in size to Montgomery County, that there were at least 270 poultry operations in the county, and people didn't even know how many there were. And 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 if no one has a requirement to report it, no one has a, there's no requirement, no per permit requirement. The only thing it seems to me that the county can do is to look at something that's going to go in and and ask that. This, their assessment be done to see what 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 is the likely result. We think that the likely result of a uh, a, a public public nuisance would be public health nuisance would be created would be if you are obviously are close to residents or close to schools, close to churches, and that we we don't know for sure, but that's that's how I think it should be looked at. And again, there's plenty of places in Montgomery County for these operations don't want them and don't think they're it's in anyone's interest to have them um, near residences, schools, or church. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Layer. We appreciate it. All right. Next on our agenda is to approve our consent agenda, which were the minutes from the October 19th meeting. I do need a motion to approve our consent agenda. I make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Thank you, Mary. I need a second. I second the motion. And since it's just us three, it moves. So we are we are good to go. So I know next we will have an update, I think, from Mr. Patterson. And then, Mary, I know you're going to speak to us too, Mary Perez. So whomever would like to go first. Mary, why don't you give us our COVID update? And I know there were a few other things you needed from us this evening. I did, and good evening, everyone. Um, good evening. Margaret, Margaret Gibbons is going to speak first on the um, four bullet items on the agenda I sent out, uh, the 2022 survey report, strategic plan, the Montgomery County 2021 NC data card, the 2021 county health ranking, and the Montgomery County NC child health report. And then after she's done, then I'll come on with the updates. Thank you. Yes. So to start out, um, we did send out the strategic plan um, survey for the board members to take, as well as some of our health advisory committee and our staff here at the department. Um, and we did go ahead and get those results back from that SWOT analysis. So I'll be happy to send that out to you all. Um, that'll be used this week to kind of finalize our next strategic plan for the next few years. Um, and then that uh, will be presented. I have a question. That yes. SWOT analysis, is it going to expire today? No. Tomorrow. The link to take it. Yes. No, it'll it'll still be open. I can go ahead and run another report on it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Um, no, you're good. And then for to meet some of our accreditation requirements, we do have to present two annual reports to the board every year. Um, so for one, for the first report, we had the Montgomery County data card, and that pretty much is just the child health card, and it states what we already kind of figured from our community health assessment this year. And it's just things that we can use to help us develop our programs and strengthen our outreach in the community. So one thing that we really look at is um, children living in homes, how many are going to high school, the education rate within the county, access to food, things like that, who receives prenatal care. So right now we're seeing 59% within Montgomery County are receiving prenatal care of the maternity patients. 48% of our third grades have a third grade students scoring proficient in reading, um, and then 4.6% of, of our children are without health insurance. So those are some of the things that we looked at off of that report. The next report was the county health rankings for 2021. And something that we really saw that was on here was that adult smoking, obesity, food environment index, and then physical inactivity were all ranked higher for Montgomery County than the state. So those are all things that we want to focus on in the next few years based off of that data for our programs and outreaches. And that's all that I have. Thank you, Ms. Gibbons, Margaret. Thank you. Mary. Can someone hear me? I'm trying to call in for the public comment. Well, I guess we need to uh, press pause a moment and okay. back up. No, not with you. I'm so sorry. We didn't know oh. anyone else was on there for public 
forum. Frankie, can we go backwards? Um, I have a question for you. Is it for the for the Board of Health and Human Services or for the Board of Commissioners, ma'am? Health and Human Services. I attempted to speak several times and evidently you couldn't hear me. Okay. Madam Chairman, it's totally up to you. Um, we can. So, Mary, if you can hold on, Dale can hold on for a moment. We will, if you will go ahead and state your name and address. And did you hear okay. the, the you. did you hear the rules for public forum that you have three minutes? I, yes, I did. Okay. And I've already heard Mr. Mr. Lair and Lynn. So okay. I was trying to get in. Okay, my name is Kay Martin and I live on Yank Road in Mount Gilead also. Mm -hmm. And um was present at the last commissioner's meeting also and just want to uh, I guess plead our uh, a case for the entire county um, for protection health wise from um, poultry operations being placed in communities where people are living already mm -hmm. and um, there's many health reasons and we understand there's other there's very limited control under just some general rules but under the health rules we would like you all to, uh, as a health board, to investigate uh, the dam danger and the damages that a poultry, large poultry operations uh, can do to the people and uh, the environment that we're living in uh, if you're close. And, you know, there's poultry dust, uh, there's infections that come from birds, from the air circulation, these big fans in the poultry houses that circulate it out. Uh, there's harmful gases that come from both pesticides, disinfectants, and the litter treatments that, you know, cause uh, problems. Uh, a lot of uh, respiratory issues in people who are more sensitive and even has created respiratory issues and people who currently uh, don't have uh, compromised health situations. Um, and again, we reemphasize, we understand poultry growing is an important part of rural North Carolina. Uh, we're fully in favor of it being uh, operational and you know they contribute to our community, but we just would like to see some health guidelines as far as the approval for location of these farms to protect the residents and um, the environment that we're living in uh, in established neighborhoods. Is that it, Ms. Martin? Yes, thank you for considering it. And, you know, uh, the health board continuing to investigate and seeing if they can work to create some guidelines to protect health, health issues. Absolutely, and we appreciate your time and so sorry that we didn't hear you earlier. Well, I apologize and thank you for making the accommodation. Absolutely. Um, maybe I did something right, but <laughs> finally you could hear me. But thank you very that, much. That works. Thank you. All right, Ms. Perez. Okay, can you hear me? We can. Okay, so I believe everyone received a copy of our budget summary as well as our activity report for the month of December. Are there any questions on that? No? No questions, Mary. Okay, perfect. Um, so I'm just gonna give you the updated numbers. Since, well, I, I will share that since Friday um, of last week, we've had 307 reports come in just to the health department on positive cases. We are, Montgomery County is now considered to be a, a severe risk level. Our infection rate is 1.34. Positivity rate is 34.32. We've had 112 COVID deaths to date. Um, and since yesterday, we've had 94 cases reported, 947 positive cases in the last 14 days, 
and all together lab, both lab confirmed and antigen positive, it's been 5,963. I, so I saw that on the Facebook page today, the right. report. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, definitely some hefty numbers. Yes, so we're, we're not slowing down. Uh, we're, we're just about where we were last year, about this time, if not worse. Uh, let's see what else. Um, the only other thing I have to share is that we do have the vaccine site that's open um, next to the Board of Elections. It's 327D North Main Street. They're open uh, Monday through Friday. Well, they're closed Friday. They're open Monday through Thursday and then Saturday. And if you would like the actual uh, schedule, just let me know and I'll send it to Misty and she can send it out to you. They're currently doing testing on the east side of the county at East Montgomery. Um, they do testing uh, every day except Friday and Sunday. And Mary, I, th I think I just saw too on Facebook that there was, an, I'm assuming, I don't know who's doing it. I'm assuming the health department. I didn't read that closely, but there was going to be a site in Candor this Saturday. Okay. I think, Margaret, you know who's doing that? Yeah, so that's going to focus on um, access to farm workers, um, but it's open to anyone. And Chrissy Haynes with the Cooperative Extension is the one that sent that out. Okay, thank you. I'm like, I know I just saw that somewhere, but. Okay. Is that a testing site or a vaccination site or both? Just a vaccination site. Okay. And uh, that's pretty much all I have. I stand corrected. That is vaccines and testing. Okay. Yeah, I thought I had seen that, yeah. Okay, well, thank you for that information. And uh, any questions for Mary John or Mary Hassel? Any questions? Um, I have a question. Is there um, for the county, if someone um, is symptomatic is and has to be out of work, are they required to get a test? not necessarily required based on the employer. It's based on the employer's employer's rules and regulations. It's not necessarily required. What's required is a five-day quarantine. Well, that's what I'm asking is for the county um, to know if, um, if that person is COVID positive or not. I mean, because you won't know unless you're tested if people you've come in contact with need to quarantine as well. Yeah, that's what's driving the testing. I'm asking for our our county employees. So I guess that's a question for Frankie. Yes, Mary, it's it's largely the honor system. Uh, we are following the CDC guidelines as they present themselves, which have reduced some of the quarantine periods. Um, but when the positive um, result is reported to us uh, in HR, we do advise them of when they are to return to work and um, depend on the honor system. Okay. I do have one more thing to add. I've ordered um, 250 self-test kits for the county, for the county employees. And as soon as they arrive, they will be given out to whichever department wants them. And that's coming from the state of North Carolina. And, and we also, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mary, go ahead. We also have masks available that were given to the general public. The K, the uh, N95 actually is what they are. So they're, they're able to come and get masks from us. Could I also pose employees. a question? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, John, go ahead. Uh, just as a, a point of reference, as far as I know that the, there's information coming out on, on how to go online to uh, 
um, you know, apply for uh, the free at home test uh, through the federal government? Um, are we um, going to be putting that information out for the general public to, to find access to those at home tests for free? Well, the interesting part is the first notification that we received, it was not supposed to be posted on Facebook, but I understand it's already on Facebook. Okay. Yeah, I understand that. And just it, those. Is through, it is through the Postal Service. It came out through USPS um, on Facebook where you can go ahead and order per household, and uh, but they won't ship until late January. Right. All right. Frankie, did you have something to say before we move on to Mr. I was, Patterson? I was just going to add that county employees, um, those that are on our health insurance plan, which is through the state health insurance plan, can get an over-the-counter test at no charge, and that's through the state health plan. Thank you. All right, Dale, you're up. Um, you guys have received the minutes from our meeting this past week. Um, the data, as Mary has highlighted, was a little worse than it was at our meeting last week, mm -hmm. as indicated in the minutes. Um, we just basically have a discussion. The, the discrepancy that's there that's obvious uh, is our vaccination rate in the county as it compares to the state vaccination rate. Um, we're sitting at 42% in our county um, for a total vaccination rate when the state average is 70%. Um, and we held a discussion at our four, at our meeting last week on ways to try to encourage people to get the vaccine. And, and, uh, I don't have any answers. <laughs> um, I, I don't, I don't have any answers. Uh, we, we talked about a, another online forum or, uh, word of mouth by having some people meet, meet publicly if necessary, but I don't have the answers. We hit, we held a forum earlier on, um, it had a low attendance. It was mainly mainly the the politicians and and some of our medical leaders that were in that forum. I don't know that holding another forum is going to be beneficial uh, as far as an outreach to the populations that that should consider the vaccination. Um, but I just know we're we're dismally below our vaccination average in comparison to the state and national averages uh, for our county. And and I don't I don't have the explanation for that other than if the political arena and people's refusal of the vaccine because it's in a lot of cases it's felt mandated. Um, but, but I, I don't have the answers. Uh, maybe John can enlighten us a little bit on, uh, from his, his perspective, but I, I don't have the answers as to try to drive the vaccination rates up. Dr. Woodgear, anything for you to add? Uh, I'm, uh, very frustrated by this myself. Uh, even, uh, getting people to, uh, comply with wearing masks and social distancing in my office has been very difficult. Um, I honestly do not have any explanation for this. Uh, I, I don't know if anybody is aware that in 1947 in New York City, there was a smallpox outbreak. And in 1947, it was in March and April of 1947, a, rep a case of smallpox was reported in New York City, and within three weeks, statistically, uh, almost seven million people got vaccinated. Wow. That's that. We look up smallpox in New York City in 1947. It was over six million eight hundred, and I think it was six million eight hundred thousand people had been vaccinated within three weeks, and here we are uh, facing not quite as scary and not quite as deadly a disease, but certainly one that's killed over 850,000 Americans. And that's just what has been reported because not in the early phases when testing wasn't available, it wasn't possible to find out if ever, it, how many people who'd actually died of uh, SARS-CoV-2. And 850,000 is just what the official uh, number is, but it's probably significantly higher. And yet there are uh, so much, there is so much uh, uh, drag and anti-immunization uh, sentiment. My personal belief is there's only so many uh, years in a person's life. Why throw them away on something that as simple as, I mean, police wear bulletproof vests, even though a bullet could hit them in the leg or in the head. 
uh, we wear seat belts, even though they all don't always work and airbags don't always work. Why wouldn't we take a precaution that at least has a chance of not just protecting ourselves, but what about the loved ones around us? What about our, our grandparents, our, our children, uh, people who have diabetes or who have uh, other uh, comorbidities such as asthma or uh, COPD? Why uh, is it that there is such a resistance to take a, a precaution that could conceivably protect the lives of not just themselves, but the other people whom they love and whom they come in contact with. I don't have an answer. I'm as frustrated as anybody. And uh, I, I will tell you that it has uh, certainly driven my decision to go from four days a week to three days a week now to two days a week, because uh, at 68, heading for 69, I don't have that many years yeah. left. And uh, the only thing I can do is try not to die of carelessness, mine or someone else's. Yeah. Well, thank you for your input. And guys, uh, I hate to be abrupt, but it is 601 and we have our county commissioner meeting to get to. So obviously uh, it is um, crazy times right now with everything going on with COVID. The one question I would have, and Dale, I, you don't have to give the answer right now. If you could send it to us. Do we know population segment, right? Is there um, an ethnicity that's most challenged with not getting vaccination? Do we know a population group that, you know, again, I know that was an early on focus of, of the health department and things to try to, to touch those groups. But if we see any of that, maybe we can put a strategy, you know, well, surrounding uh, those pieces. I really think you're, you're gonna find that it's the younger adults younger adults okay i think across all ethnicities i think you're going to find it's going to be the younger adult population that that the the older population of our county has done pretty well i think been more diligent at getting the mm -hmm. vaccine but i think it's the the younger adults from what i've seen in community activity okay. all right guys well i appreciate all your time i know we got pushed back just a little bit with public forum um thank you um, we'll chat with you guys um, in a few months. If we need to chat with you sooner, we can always do a, a special meeting, but I do need to have a motion to adjourn this meeting. I make a motion, we adjourn. For Mary Hassel, I'm making the motion, I need a second. I'll second the motion. Thank you, John, second. So all in favor, or how about we say this, all, any opposed? Kay's the only other one that's on there. Any opposed? No opposed, so we will adjourn this meeting. Thank you guys. Have Thank a wonderful you. rest of your evening. Yep, have a good night. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you, Mary. Uh-huh.